Hi everyone, um, my name's Anne and I'm the host of this show that's coming up now and I just want to say thank you so much for that beautiful song, amazing and um, yeah, my first guest is Kirsten Buxton and I'm really overjoyed to welcome Kirsten tonight. Okay. I don't know how this goes and <laughs> when Kirsten comes in <laughs> and I'm really anxious so I just want to put that out there. This is my first time doing anything like this and uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful gift. Oh, I'm right here with you, Anne. <laughs> ah, hi Kirsten. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm just really honoured to join with you together I know it's just for us to be here and and to share what is so natural for us it's about our purpose and our life and mm. it feels like such a gift to have this collaboration together and that we can then just share what is real for us and what has supported mm. us in our awakening journey Okay, well, I've got some questions for you, Kirsten. Um, I've got a little sheet, so I'm going to read a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, it's around the uniqueness, really, of living miracles in using, um, in modern communities, using functions. 
um, and we have a strong emphasis on on functions and projects. Um, and at a recent retreat, um, people were quite puzzled watching us. Yeah, just really busy in our functions, seemingly very happy. And I just wonder if you could explain to our viewers why we have this emphasis on functions and how we can seemingly use work uh, to come to a unified perception um, and to awaken. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a long question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, well, the first thing that the first line from the course that comes to my mind is from the "I need do nothing" section, where Jesus says, "From this place, this quiet, still place within, you will be sent on many busy doings," and that's really, uh, if you look at our life. And what it looks like for the most part for this community, we're on a lot of busy doings. <laughs> we're very <laughs> active. We're, we're being used in so many different ways um, from doing this, like live broadcasts to looking mm. after entire centers, which involves everything you would think of for a normal household times 10. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a lot. And yet the difference the core difference um, is the purpose. Really, what are we, what are we doing? Mm. What are we doing it for? And it's back to that one line, from this still place within, you will be sent on many dis busy doings in service to the Holy Spirit. So what we're doing is we're healing our mind and practicing forgiveness and serving the Holy Spirit. And then whatever it is that we're doing, the actions are the backdrop for that. Mm. Yeah, mm. certainly look very active, but in... Back to... Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we all have very different kinds of focuses. Um, this morning I was walking the dog and, uh, you know, and here I am. Um, <laughs> in your book, I Married a Mystic, you share very clearly your journey with, the, with David and the kinds of things that arose for your healing. Um, on page 75, you talk about stamping CDs and how you felt it was beneath you. I wonder if you can elaborate on that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, going through one of those um, times of feeling just all the darkness in my mind and ego resistance and... And then I was there with David, who was always talking about the joy, and he was in the joy, saying, well, yeah, it's, it's all about joy. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm so far from joy. Um, but here's something that needs to be done. We were going out on the travels, and um, we were going to take these CDs with us with David's teachings on them. And back in those days, <laughs> um, it involved the... Uh, it was all very manual, copying the CDs and then making labels for them, printing out the labels and printing, putting the labels onto the CDs, putting them into little paper envelopes, wrapping rubber bands around them. And so I was doing this task and I just started to feel this resentment. Like, what am I, what am I doing? And... And this feels like such a menial task. It's boring. It's repetitive. It's, I just could feel this, like, just that heavy feeling of nothingness, mm. empty, no sense of purpose. And that grew. And so I went up and talked to David and said, oh, I just, I just, yeah, 
what am I doing this for? And, and he said, well, what else would you rather be doing? And with that question, it, it reminded me that, oh, that's right. Yeah, why am I here? Who sent me here? And then I really, I remembered there was this little bit of light came through the darkness in my mind. Oh, that's right. Jesus guided me here. And, and what is this whole place for? What are these CDs for? What am I making the CDs for? And just with that little bit of opening in my mind, I could, I could remember, oh, that's right. These are all for sharing the message. These are all for awakening. These are all gifts from God. And the only reason I'm, I'm doing this is to have a focus from my mind. So when, when David said, what else would you rather be doing? It was like this flash of gratitude came into my mind. Like, actually, my mind's such a mess right now and so unfocused. I think this is probably the most helpful thing for me to be doing right now. It's repetitive and simple and I don't have to think. <laughs> I can just step by step, CD by CD, envelope by envelope, you know, let my mind be present. Mm. So it was, yeah, this whole shift from like resentment and pride and, you know, who do you think I am? And I've been, you know, I, I was the queen of my own life before. I was free. I could go anywhere and do anything. And, and here I am in this little room making CDs. <laughs> So from the ego's perspective, it's little. But then mm, from the yeah. gratitude of remembering the, the purpose, it was just the most perfect thing for me to be doing. Mm, thank you. Yeah, in stark contrast, at the same time, you were out touring with David and sharing, and you were quite new to the course. Um, so I wonder how how that kind of worked, how did it speed up the awakening journey for you? Yeah, yeah, it did. Because like from that experience, like in the safety of being in the peace house, um, which is very, very simple, you know, these kind of tasks and projects that were all just for me to heal my mind, you know, let that ego resistance come up knowing there was no one there to see me going through this. It was just me, mm. and David, and the cats at the time. <laughs> and none of them judged me. <laughs> and, and then we went out on the road, and, and a lot of my journey was actually in front of an audience. And so we'd, we'd go to a gathering because you know, David was invited to shine his light and hold these gatherings and the first gathering we went to, there was a chair at the front of the room and a microphone for me. And I'd only been studying the course for six months. And, and so my, my first experience of that was really a lot of fear coming up. Like, whoa, like, what do I have to share? I'm sure everyone knows a lot more than I do. Mm. And, but that um, contrast experience of being kind of in in the safety, like in my closet praying, <laughs> and then going out and daring to be completely transparent mm. and to dare to, to speak when there was something there for me. Um, and I'd, I'd been a teacher prior to coming on this journey, and so when I had a role of, of being a teacher you know, with children, it was very easy for me to speak in front of a group. But this is completely different. This is about not having any kind of role, but just daring to show up and, and be transparent and let my healing be used to, as a demonstration of, of what it is that I was walking through. And so, yeah, that opportunity gave me um, the, I would say the speed up was realizing and learning that every time I shared my authentic experience of exactly what I was going through, it was a blessing for everyone who was with me. Like they would say, oh my God, thank you. I've been going through something similar. I thought I was the only one dealing with these attack thoughts or dealing with this guilt. Mm. And so it went from being my healing, Kirsten's healing, that 
you know, when you go through your own guilt and healing, you, the egos, they're judging at every step of the way. You should be healed by now. You shouldn't be going through mm-hmm. it again. You know, it's always yeah. judging the healing as failure. And then mm-hmm. that experience of sharing it um, showed me that it was a miracle. And, and it also lifted it out of being my healing, but being our healing. And that, I think, was the greatest gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Kirsten. Yeah, I can't imagine mm-hmm. how much courage that actually took to to do that, sitting here in front of a camera. It's like, yeah. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> amazing. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got um, approximately 100 remote volunteers um, and they're using their skills and their talents um, often skills and talents they were completely unaware of. We have translators, transcribers, lots of technical people that didn't know they had those skills inside of them. Um, And they're finding the joy in that. They felt called to offer the services to the Holy Spirit in this way and to follow that calling. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you feel to say to the volunteers or any advice on using their functions our projects fully for their awakening. First of all, thank you. Yeah, I want to say thank you for participating and 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 being willing to offer your skills and your time to the Holy Spirit. Um, it's a huge gift, and and I know everyone who is volunteering knows for themselves what a gift it is. <laughs> Um, but also just on behalf of everyone who receives the the ongoing miracle and healing from the work that you're doing. Because for me, when I first listened to those, you know, that they were cassette tapes of David's to start with, and then they became MP3s once a group of us got together and started making them into MP3s and then putting them on the first website. um, We... Yeah, they, I mean, they were for me. Like every, every talk I listened to was for me. Mm-hmm. And, and then every, um, every time I listened to a talk to write up a description to put on a website, it was for me to, to listen and filter through and pull out the nuggets of really what is this talk about. Mm-hmm. And so just remembering that everything we're doing, it's, it's for my own healing. It's, it's always for my, my relationship with God and therefore it's a blessing that then gets extended for everyone else. And so it's just, I think it can quite easily get kind of overlooked when the ego comes in and judges our efforts as little and insignificant. Um, but every, every small bit of effort that we put towards this purpose, this function, and extending these resources that are golden, <laughs> they're so clear, you know, it's literally for the whole, it's for the whole sonship and for so many more who are going to come after us, seeking the truth, seeking the clarity. Um, so I would say that and just, yeah, that it's really for, for ourself and the whole And just watching for the doer, you know, when the doer comes in Um, and turns it into a sacrificial task. Like, you know, I started doing this out of joy and now I have to work at it. And they're making me work at it. Now I'm working for an organization. You know, those kind of thoughts that take you from pure gratitude of thank you for giving me something for healing my mind to I'm not even getting paid for this. (laughs) So... Yeah, and it's just good to be able to keep revealing these thoughts and, and having them healed and laughing at them together. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they come up for everyone. And to know when that motivation comes in and it shifts from I'm serving the Holy Spirit to I'm, I'm serving something else, just, mm. just stop. Just be willing to stop, pause, give it all over. Be willing to just completely drop the world for a moment until you can feel the sense of the gift, you know, and the desire, like I want, 
I, I'm remembering what it's for and I want to do this again. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned the doer because that's something that, uh, yeah, I'm handing over quite a lot. And um, yeah, it's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I know when I volunteered from home myself, um, as much as, well, I had a lot of fear actually that was coming up and I had to release it, but I really enjoyed the function um, that was given, which was around translations. Um, but sometimes it was quite difficult to turn my attention um, to the function, I, I could quite easily distract myself with a lot of other things. So I wonder if there's anything around that that you could offer some help. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, just to know that's completely normal. That okay. <laughs> <laughs> the ego is always going to try to just put it off, and it's, it's always putting putting off God. You know, putting off mm -hmm. the present moment, putting off anything really to do with your awakening, whether it's meditation, like, okay, I'll just finish all these household chores first and then I'll meditate. You know, or, yeah. or my function, it's sitting there waiting for me. But yeah, so it's just acknowledging that I think is, is really helpful that this is, it's normal. It's the resistance. And then um, I would say, just do it. Like if you're in that, <laughs> I do it now or not, just do it. And you move in the direction, you'll either do it for a minute or you could find yourself right in the flow and it, and it could be half an hour, three hours, the entire day. Mm. Why. But I would say rather than trying to judge, like work it out, I would say just move in the direction and, mm. and you know, like, oh, no, it's not quite the right timing or thank God I didn't stop and think about it for too long. <laughs> okay um yeah i've talked about volunteers and remote volunteers is it possible for someone who doesn't feel the calling to become a community member or are able for some reason to volunteer remotely to use the teachings from the course in their everyday functions and if so how mm. I mean, is it helpful to start with something inspiring? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think the main thing is around like truly being aware of the purpose mm. because we're not trying to bring the the truth into the illusion. We're we're wanting to get in touch with the Holy Spirit's purpose. So rather than thinking of it as like, okay, I really don't like housework, for example, but I'm going to like try to bring the truth into the illusions. It's more looking at the purpose. Why am I doing the housework, for example? Because house, housework or cleaning is can be a function. It can be... Really, our function is forgiveness. Right. All through the course, Jesus is talking about my function is forgiveness and my function and my happiness are one. And so when we're really in touch with our true function, we're healing our mind through forgiveness. It's washing away a sense of a separate self and, and all egoic reasons for doing things, all egoic purposes for living this life. So we have to see, really, what am I doing something for? And if you consider housework, I'm doing it. And this is where you have to get really radically honest with what is this for? If you're doing it with the sense of, well, I have to, you know, I have to. Why? Really look at it. Well, it's, I mean, I would be embarrassed if my house wasn't clean. So it's part of keeping my self-image together. I would be letting down my family if I didn't do the housework. I would be ashamed or, you know if I didn't do it. Um, and so looking at it for those reasons, those will be the reasons to do it. Or some sacrificial belief, like, well, it just has to be done, and I'm the only one, and no one else will do it, so out of resentment, that's why I'm doing it. You know? So these are the reasons to, for, that you'd want to, in prayer, give over to the Holy Spirit and say, actually, 
I don't want to do this cleaning without you, Holy Spirit. And I'm willing to clean if it's with you. So you guide me. Let me give this whole area, let me give this project over to you and invite you into my mind so that I'm with you and you guide me how long I do it for, what I do. And you tell me when I'm done. You tell me when to start, you tell me when to finish. And, and if you're not hearing a specific voice, just really tuning into the feeling when it starts to feel like a sacrifice, it starts to feel like you're physically hurting, clearly that's not God's will for you. So it's getting really clear about what is the function you know, and what is it for. So yes, you certainly don't, the function externally doesn't need to look a certain way it doesn't mean that you have to be transcribing or translating or something you know that even would be considered more spiritual it's like our whole life can be in the sense of purpose and function to the holy spirit and that's actually the goal to come into this complete experience that you're never not in your function actually you're never putting off the Holy Spirit or sacrificing. You're, you're constantly in prayer and then being used. And it looks how it looks. So it's like a reversal from as a person, as a human being, this is what I have to do. And then I can have my spiritual time to, I'm going to give you my day. I'm going to give you my tasks. And I'm going to be guided by you and use it for the healing of my mind and trust that what really needs to be done will be done. And to dare to trust that what I think should be done might not get done today or might not be, you know, what's the Holy Spirit's plan. Mm. And you know that, Anne. You've been involved with cooking and cleaning (laughs) at the centre as well as overseeing all of the translations and in the publications area. So it's like this, it's like a transferring this awareness you know, and this training and this purpose to to these different areas. Yeah, it's like um, there is a sense of um, resting the mind in whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's, yeah, cleaning a floor or even actually I'm starting to feel really calm now. Perhaps it's because we're coming close to the end, but... <laughs> It's like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, like that unified perception, you know, like everything's the same. And um, yeah, every day's, yeah, just another beautiful opportunity. Um, yeah, just the last question, Kirsten, which is around have you any advice to give to anyone that actually is feeling the inspiration to volunteer with Living Miracles? Follow it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you feel that tickle and you feel that inspiration, just dare to reach out, dare to follow it. And and it can be really scary because it's like, well, what's going to happen to me if I start giving my life over to this. Um, So just dare to reach out to someone and connect. And Mm. yeah, and you're in for a really beautiful surprise and connection and opportunities for for mind training and that's really what it's all for it's for mind training to to really bring our mind into a very focused place so that the holy spirit can can use us as eventually full time as miracle workers but it takes a lot of training to to come into that presence and and into the present and so that's really what all of these projects are for and that's what volunteering is all about. It's, it's about coming into yeah. service of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you so much, Kirsten. I, I know when I was given the role of helping to oversee the translations when I was um, living in my home, and um, yeah, it just seemed like such a, a big, yeah, a big task but I, I i found the ability to say yes and it's been yeah the best yes <laughs> ever it was just yeah just so given and i'm so grateful that i listened to that call and that i'm here 
with everybody today and sitting here. It's um, how did this happen? It's in absolutely incredible. Absolutely, I'm blown away. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the support. Yeah, to open my heart and and to take that. <laughs> Um, incredible thank you for for watching the show um, thank you Jesus and Holy Spirit for yeah for showing showing us the way I've just got such deep gratitude okay so yeah next week I'm going to be interviewing a Swedish couple um, Sylvia and Thomas, who've translated and proofread with uh, another lady called You a Brit, and they've had some, yeah, some very interesting moments. Um, you know, like to to move through the healing. Um, yeah. Um, so tune in next week. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. What's up, <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>